I've, I've been really impressed with them. They're deep. I think uh, Trace is playing at an All-American level. Veteran group. they got some new guys, but they've got uh, guys that have been there. And they're all playing well. A lot of different guys on any given day can, can hurt you. How different is their style with Coach Woodson? Uh, I don't know if it's that much different. I mean, obviously, he's put his stamp on it. It's, it's a team that, uh, that really competes defensively. Um, they, uh, you know, offensively, you know, they're, they're focused a lot on Trace, but there's a lot of other guys. They got a lot of other weapons. Like I said, you know, Stewart can hit threes. Cop is a veteran guy. Johnson, Finnessy, I mean, you just keep going. Galloway. I think Race Thompson is playing at a whole nother level. I mean, he, you saw that last year with Race. He really took a big step, became one of the better players in our league, playing great. So, uh, you know, they they attack you. You know, they got athletes, and they legitimately go 12 deep. What did you guys focus on during this kind of this little break that you guys have had? Yeah, we uh, kind of focused on ourselves a little bit more than, you know, you have a week off. You're not really jumping to the next game. You're trying to. You know, get better at some of the things that we thought we didn't do well. I mean, obviously, we didn't defend as well as we would have liked or rebound as well as we would have liked, so worked on that. How would you assess your team's defensive progress this year? It, 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 it's been good at times. You know, it's not been as consistent as it needs to be. How's, uh, you know, Keegan took that hard fall? How's, how's he sort of progressed over the last week or so? You know, I think it was good for him to have a couple of days where he could you know, get in the training room. I think he's feeling a lot better. Safe to say the rest of the team is near full health? Yeah, that's safe to say, yeah. How can you guys be a better rebounding team? You've got guys that are capable of it. Well, I think it's, it's a collective situation. You know, a lot of the rebounds we're not getting are the long you know, team shooting a lot of threes, balls bouncing fun. You know, our guards have to rebound better. Our wings have to rebound better. Yeah, we have to be more physical at times. But, you know, when you're struggling rebounding the ball, it's not, it's not just your four and your five, man. You know, it's everybody. I think we got to be better collectively, you know, which is only going to help us on offense as well. Going back to the several day stress between games during the last stretch, the team really came out energized, went on a, a winning streak. Do you anticipate a similar type of energy and maybe sense of urgency after this long stretch? Yeah, you know, I, th I, I think there's no question about it that, you know, you have a couple days off, you, you need to come out with energy and, you know, play better than we did in the last game. Uh, I think we're smart enough to know and understand that. And, uh, you know, practice was good, has been good. And uh, I expected that. I expect that to continue. How do you assess Phillips' play uh, as he's kind of gotten used to, to Big Ten basketball? You know, I think he's been playing really well. I mean, the last game, of course, he was in foul trouble the whole time, so he didn't play much. Uh, but you know, when he's been able to stay out on the floor, he's been effective. You know, both on the glass, defensively. You know, you see his offense coming a little bit more and more. And, and I think that will continue as well for him. I realize it's, this is out of your control and it's not likely to change any, so you just deal with it. But, but the Big Ten schedule, do you like the way it's constructed? And if, if how would, what would you like to see in a perfect world? You know, that, th there's a lot of factors, I think, going into that, which is, I think, what your point was. You know, TV kind of drives it. You know, how do you figure out who the single plays, double plays, home and road? I mean, I, you know, it, it's never consistent. It's not going to be. So it's not, it's not worth complaining about. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, you know it, there's a lot of things you would like to see done differently. You know, everybody wants Saturday home games. Uh, you can't always get them, you know, the, the time of the games. You know, it's pretty much pretty well set. You know, they're six and eight, and they're seven and nine in the East. So, uh, you know, odd times on Sundays. Yeah, you know, that's been a relatively recent development in the last ten years, probably. Uh, 
you know, so you know, we, if, you had, if you had a weekend game, you'd rather play on Saturday. But we'll play whenever, they, whenever the game is scheduled. We'll play it. We'll show up and play it. You have another 8 o'clock Thursday, and it seems like that's a real problem time for your fans. Is it frustrating to not see the arena as full as it could be because of factors beyond your control? Yeah, but I, I think it's like you said, Mike, it's, that's when the games are. So, you know, you can't complain about it. Like, it would, would be really foolish of me to complain about that. You know, I can't. I don't, like you said, I don't have any control over whether the fans can show up or not. You know, at 8 o'clock on a Thursday night is tough for a guy that wants to drive over from Des Moines. Uh, we all recognize that. And we wish, it, you know, we could be better, but that's when the games are. I think, I think Jordan commands a lot of attention. I know people look at the shot attempts and say he's not being aggressive, but it seems like with the attention, you know, commands all the attention. So how do you kind of maybe get him going maybe more so? Earlier in games. Well, we put the ball in his hands a little bit more in the last game. That helped, uh, and and I really appreciate him because he's not hunting shots. He's not. He's never been a guy that took bad shots. So you know, I certainly want him to shoot more. We're trying to run stuff for him. We'll keep going to him, and uh, he's got the ultimate green light. But again, put him, put the ball in his hands a little more might help. The. Men's and women's programs here both have the leading scorer in the nation, which I think mathematically is almost impossible, but it's true. Uh, do you, have you had much of a chance to watch Caitlin? And if so, what do you, what do you think of her game? She's, you know, her game is, is next level. Uh, it always has been. I watched her in high school, watched her when she got here. She does things on the floor in terms of what she sees is 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 stuff you don't see all the time. You know, when you see it, you know it. It's special. You know, she's somebody that could very definitely be the first pick in the draft whenever she decides to come out. In my opinion, and she doesn't really have any weaknesses in her game that I've seen. And I think her her energy level is infectious. On top of the fact that her her skill set is so incredibly complete. Are there any, I mean, realizing they play different positions, have different roles, are there personality similarities you see between her and Keegan? I think they're different. You know, they play different positions, like you said. I think their personalities are different. Uh, but their effectiveness is pretty much the same. How has Keegan de dealt with the increased attention? He seems pretty grounded. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you wouldn't even know it to be around him. Just, you know, very business-like approach. You know, I just you know always want want to make sure he's still having fun. I mean, it seems to be. Do you think that extra year of prep school really helped Keegan even grow into the role maybe quicker than maybe some people anticipated? Well, it, it definitely did because I think they played like forty some games. You know, in, in Iowa high schools, you only play twenty one, twenty two. Uh, so you're, you're, you're playing 40-plus games. You're playing against junior college teams. You're playing against other prep schools. You're playing against other guys that are 20 years old. But I think more importantly, it was an opportunity for him to just kind of be the man, unless he was on that team. And it was a good team. It wasn't like uh, they didn't have other guys that could play. I mean, that's the kind of place that is. But, you know, he – you know, he, I remember the one weekend tournament, was a lot of really good teams. He was the MVP. And – Everybody was surprised because uh, they didn't know who he was. But uh, that's just kind of how he is. He just went and dominated the whole weekend. I'm getting calls from friends of mine that, that are at the game. But it wasn't surprising because I had gone down there. You know, Billy and I went down there to see him, see both of them. And they, you, you could see where it was headed pretty easily. It's one of these times Chris is going to come in and just trick us, right? <laughs> that's that'd be a good one. <laughs> what uh, have the last few days been like for you guys uh, in terms of practice? And yeah, no, it's just been a couple of days to get healthy. I've had a lot of guys with a little injuries, a little dinged up, uh, but just to get healthy and then also just work on ourselves. Um, just. Uh, 
it's been, been a really a couple of days of reflection uh, and just trying to better ourselves as a team and as individuals. So, Fran said you kind of needed maybe a couple of days after that spill you took at Wisconsin. You feel better now? Feel back to 100? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the last the couple of days after that, I was obviously pretty dinged up um, uh, just from that fall. I had a lot of little injuries and stuff like that, but I'm 100% now. Um, those couple of days helped a lot. Uh, just getting back in this uh, seven-day stretch without games helped a lot for myself individually, but also our team. How much do you look forward to going against like a Trace Jackson Davis? Yeah, no, I'm excited to go against anyone. But obviously, he's a great player, uh, one of the best in our conference. Uh, it's just another challenge for me uh, personally, and as well as our team. Uh, so I'm excited to get out there uh, on the court and go against them, uh, especially uh, Indiana as a team. How much of you guys emphasize rebounding, and how can you guys be better in that area? Yeah, so uh, rebounding is obviously a team thing. Uh, so we all have to buy in as a team uh, to get better at that. Uh, and there's uh, standards you have to meet uh, to be able to out rebound uh, teams like Indiana uh, and a lot of teams in this conference. Uh, so we're just taking it upon ourselves to be better uh, collectively rebounding because obviously you can't uh, be on offense if you don't have the ball. So that's just uh, something that we uh, need to take pride in going in uh, thir in the Thursday. Are there any specific things you're working on in practice to, to get better at rebound? Obviously, box out is one. Is there anything else that you're focusing on? Yeah, just collectively uh, rebounding the basketball. Uh, obviously, re boxing out uh, their guys is obviously a big thing that we need to do, uh, but it's an effort thing as well. Um, that's just all guys going to the glass so that we can uh, get the ball and get in a transition and to what we like to do. Uh, so that's been an emphasis for us, for sure. Seems like there's not a lot of you know schematically things different between Woodson's crew and what you know Archie ran last year. But yeah. what have you kind of seen on tape and what's kind of stood out to you about this year's group? Yeah, no, they're a team that they have a couple of really good shares on the outside, and obviously they have Trace on the inside. Uh, but they're a team that uh, they're relentless uh, on the offensive glass, on defense. Uh, they get up in your space um, and really pressure the basketball. Uh, and if there's a guy hot, they're gonna keep going to him. Uh, but uh, they're, they're a really well-coached team this year uh, with a lot of depth. They, depth, they go 12 deep um, and really use their guys rotationally. Um, so uh, just it's a big emphasis for us uh, to be able to compete uh, and uh, match their level of intensity. What do you, uh, what do you want to see of you, know, you, you and your guys when you go out and take the floor on Thursday, just from last week to this week, what are some, maybe two or three things that you're like, okay, we, if we do this, we can come out with a win? Yeah, just effort-wise. Uh, from the jump, uh, we just need to have effort, uh, continuous effort and pride in ourselves the first 40 minutes of the game, uh, or the, for the whole 40 minutes of the game. And I just feel like uh, if we uh, have or match their effort uh, or have more effort than them, uh, that'll just help us in every aspect of the game on both sides of the ball. Um, and obviously, the effort we sustain will lead to success for us. How do you keep such an even keel when you know all the attention that you've gotten, and you know leading scorer in the country, and all the you know people writing about you nationally? How do you keep the even keel that you do? Yeah, I just take pride in myself uh, as a person. Uh, just keeping my mentality strong, uh, no matter the high or the low. Uh, just be strong mentally. Um, that's just everything I can do. Uh, personally, but I just feel like there's obviously a lot of attention on me. Luca had that same attention last year, so last year uh, was just learning from him and how he uh, cooperated with, with the attention he was getting. Uh, and just stay humble. I know that it's a blessing to be in the position I am today. Uh, so just uh, really just learn from him is really what I took from it. Are you still talking to Luca uh, during this time as well? Yeah, yeah, we talk back and forth a little bit uh, to see how he's doing. He sees how I'm doing. And obviously, he uh, just talks to me about uh, my success so far and uh, just keep pushing, keep being a leader on this team uh, and just emulate what he did last year. But no, he's been a really big figure um, in just me talking to him uh, this year about what I need to do and things like that. Keegan, it seems like you've always been pretty mature on and off the court. But how much did that year at, at DME Academy really maybe set you up for what you're kind of going through now? How, how impactful yeah. was that year? Yeah, no, I just think that year was probably the best thing I could have possibly done. Uh, just coming into college, because uh, I was playing against college guys, uh, college junior college teams. I was playing against other uh, post-grad teams that were really good. And I just think that year kind of matured me for college, um, just keeping my priorities straight.
um, not getting, not listening to any of the outside noise, um, and just keeping my mindset in the right space. Um, but no, that year definitely helped me just become a better person as well as a better player.